I'm here today to talk to you about Dothraki pronunciation. Hopefully I did a better job there than I did in my first video when I messed up quite a bit. Um, basically I'm going to go through the 20 consonants of Dothraki today and show you how they're pronounced and if I mess up that's okay because hopefully I'll at least give a glimpse of how they're supposed to be pronounced and I'll tell you how they're supposed to be pronounced anyway so even if I do mess up you ought to be able to find out where that is. Right. So I, what I have here is I have a sheet of all the Dothraki consonants listed out according to manner of articulation and place of articulation, which is how it's pronounced and where it's pronounced. So let's take a look at this sheet and I'll go through it. So what I have here is the list and you can see that there are two letters for each block. So on the left is the orthographic form, which is what's used in the spelling. And on the right in brackets is the International Phonetics Alphabet letter, which is used to show the actual only possibly one way to distinguish pronunciation of that letter. So if you go down um, on the left hand side column you can see a lot of different words like plosive, affricate, nasal. Those are all manner of articulations. So as we go through I'll explain which one each, what each one does. So let's start with the labial voiceless fricative F. It's very simple we have that in English. We also have V, so van, and M which is the nasal labial. And the label is just the lips. Fricatives are where you have sound constantly going through the mouth. You have air going through the mouth. So f, th, s, sh. You can see they all sound sort of the same. And nasals is where the air goes through the nose. So m mm and n. Mm. So if we go on to dental, you can imagine that's in the teeth. You can see that there's t, d, th, n, and l. Now in English, you pronounce those in a different place. You pronounce T, D, N, and L in the alveolar ridge, which is behind the teeth. But Dothraki, just like Spanish, pronounce them actually in the teeth or with the teeth. So you put your tongue either behind the, um, your top, the, the top of your teeth or in the teeth exactly. So like for L, it would actually work to just put it in between. Now this probably sounds a bit odd, probably sounds like you have a bit of a lisp, but if you've ever listened to anyone who speaks Spanish, this is how they pronounce it, and it's actually, it works quite well. So what you do is you put your T behind, you put your tongue behind the teeth again, so T, D, N, and L. And then the TH there isn't the TH as in THEN or THE, but it's the TH as in THIN. It's unvoiced. Now, voicing is basically done in the glottis, that's in your throat. So if you put your hand in your throat right now and you, you speak, you'll, hear, you'll feel a lot of vibrations. That is voicing. So an unvoiced thing doesn't vibrate there. So if you make a th sound and there's no vibration, then you've done it right. If you make a th sound and there is vibration, then that's not the sound in Dothraki. Right, so continuing on to the alveolar consonants. The alveolar ridge is right behind the teeth. It's where you normally pronounce t, d, l, that sort of thing. But here, it's only used for a few separate phones. So for instance, the affricate. So ch, just like in Czech, is done there. And so is j, just as in judge. Um, those both, as you can see, have two different characters because they start off with a j sound, a, a release, a, a quick release of air, just like a plosive. And then they're put together with a fricative. Um, this is different from the voiceless fricatives or the, the, the other fricatives in that region, like s, sh, z, and j. Because as you can tell, j sounds different from j because there's no burst in je. And so that's really important. It's important to remember that. So again, that's s and sh and z and j. And so those are um, all sounds which are in Dothraki. J isn't very much in English. Um, it's used in words like azure, um, which are loan words. And then if you continue on down, you can see the trill. I'm not very good at the trill because I tend to put too much energy in and it's hard for me to voice it. But it should sound something like and that's very hard to do um, for some people. It's hard for me, but there's a lot of stuff on YouTube about Spanish trills, how to do a Spanish trill. It's the same as that. Um, there's a lot of not V stuff about trills, and it shouldn't be that hard for most of you. Um, it might take a bit of practice. The tap is much easier. The tap is actually used widely in American accents. So writer and writer are actually very, very similar. They both use a tap in the middle for the T and the D. So there's no real difference, no real difference between, say, latter and ladder in American accents, because it's just ladder, ladder. 
So that's actually a tap. You just flick your tongue against the top of your alveolar ridge. So One of the tricks of getting a good tap is to not try and pronounce the R sound that you get in American English. Um, so no R, but because the, the tap and the trill actually will do that for you. So you don't need to do it at all. Um, a lot of people get messed up because they try to pronounce the R as well, and that's just a lot harder. But the tap and the trill are R sounds in themselves. Um, they're, they just sound a bit different. So the next sound we have is actually palatal. It's the glide, um, y, the front glide. There's another glide used in English, uh, the W, W. Um, they're sort of semi-vowels, but it shouldn't be hard for you to pronounce. So that's the Y isn't yet, for instance. Um, it's also in words like hoy, so it's at the end of a word sometimes. Um, it's important to state here, I should probably say that this is may not be the only palatal sound we have. It's possible that ch, j, sh, and uh, j are all palatal as well. Um, they're at least alveopalatal, which means they're a little further back. That's why they're on the right-hand side of the S and the Z um, or Z. But you don't need to worry about that now. Um, as long as you can make the sounds, it's all right. You don't need to worry about exactly where they're placed because we're not really sure. But the Y is certainly palatal, um, so that's just a y. So moving on to the velar, there's k and g which you should know from cat and gatling gun. Those are both, um, you know, pretty common phonemes in English. And then there's the other one, um, which isn't actually used in English at all. Um, it's only used in a, f a few words that are loan words, like Bach or Loch. Um, those are both from German and Scots. Um, it's also used in a language like Hebrew, Lachaim. Uh, and so what it is, it's just, it's like a K, but you don't release all the energy at once. You just keep it going. So it's like a F, except at the back of the mouth. So, um, and that's quite easy to do with practice. The next one is the uvular plosive, um, which is a bit more difficult for some people. So it's hoi, 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 which is done way at the back of the throat, near where the, the, the uvula hangs down. Um, so it's hoi, hoi. Hoy. If it sounds like there's a lot of breath in there, uh, don't worry, because in Dothraki, just as in English, um, aspirated stops are uh, can be used in the same place as unaspirated stops. Now, you may not know what that means, but if you think about the word pin and then the word spin, you can tell that the P's there are actually done differently. So in English, you actually aspirate most of our stops. You have a little burst of air. If you hold your hand in front of your mouth, you can really, really tell this. So say pin and spin. And you'll be able to see that really there's a huge difference in the amount of air that comes out. And so it's the same with koi. It's allowed to be aspirated, so don't worry about it. So it's koi, koi, koi. Um, and that takes some practice as well. And then the final consonant is just the glottal H, which is the same as in English. So ha. Um, and those are all the Dothraki consonants that we have so far. And that's how you pronounce them. You notice that there's missing some. For instance, pa and ba. Um, some of those are used in Dothraki names, um, but don't worry about that right now because they're not used in the lexicon. They're not going to be used in pretty much any Dothraki words except names. And that happens sometimes in some languages like Finnish, and it's just a natural phenomena. But these are pretty much all the sounds, and I hope that helps with Dothraki and the pronunciation of it. Those are pretty much all the sounds, so if you get those down, then you're fine. You're clear to go. Now you just have to worry about stress and vowels and perhaps weird sound changes, but for now, that's it. And so, again, just f, v, m, and then t, d, th, and n, and l, and then ch, j, s, sh, z, j, and finally, k, g, koi, and h, and h, of course. And that's it. So I hope that helped. Um, tune in next week for something else, most likely. Otherwise, hope to see you around. Uh, please join the Dothraki IRC because we're pretty lonely in there. There's only like six of us. And always looking for new people who are, want to learn this language over the next two years. So that's it. See you around. Fun us check.